greetings to all and uh, sundry my dear people of uh, Ambazonia, my fellow brief warriors of the Southern Cameroon's liberation movement, accept liberation greetings from me, Comrade John Akuro, this Sunday, the 17th day of March, the year 2024. My people, I know these are very trying moments. And so during trying moments like this ones, we are going to be having a lot of information coming in from all angles. And all we need to do is to learn how to process such information when we receive. Just before I came to the studio for a broadcast, I got uh, information that uh, there was a call for demonstrations on the, on the streets of uh, Mogamu uh, to protest what uh, the people consider, uh, I mean, an elaborate, a very long lockdown, it's a month long lockdown by uh, the ADF, uh, the armed wing of the Egg of Sea because they are mourning uh, the passing of uh, Braveheart uh, Efang. And so um, I am delighted to see here that, uh, I mean, in collaboration with uh, Comrade Sigirima and Comrade Prizo, we were able to reach out to the organizers of uh, the demonstration and draw their attention to the dangers that such a move poses to our liberation movement, I mean, to the danger that such a move poses to uh, our liberation movement and especially even to the lives of uh, the local populations. And so I'm delighted that uh, we came to an agreement that they will call off this demonstration. So if you are in Batibo local government area, take note, there is no demonstration on Tuesday. This has been caught up, giving us time to have a conversation with uh, the Egg of Sea, with the leadership of the Egg of Sea. Of course, we are all Southern Cameroonians, we are all Amazonians, seeking the freedom of our land. And so we definitely will continue talking among ourselves and we are confident that at the end of uh, this uh, conversation, we should be able to arrive at a compromise that will give room for peace to continue to reign and for our people to continue to be united around the sole objective of this liberation movement, which is handing a free, independent, and a prosperous Ambazonia to the over 8 million people who are believing in our dream for total self-determination. And so if you are listening or you are watching and you are on ground zero, please share this message. Let it go very far. Let it get to everyone in Mogamo to understand that um, the planned demonstration on Tuesday is cut off so that we have the opportunity to resolve our differences in-house. This will also be an opportunity to show to the world that we are capable and mature enough of handling our misunderstandings. Misunderstandings are bound to come up when you are dealing with people from uh, you know various walks of life and uh, different uh, origins. So that said, I want to quickly um, get into the subject matter of our discussion for today. But before I really do that, um, finally, oh my goodness, I did not notice that I was still uh, <laughs> so uh, far off. Thank you. Uh, uh, comrade Nini Ernest for drawing my attention to it. <laughs> Thank you. And so, uh, folks, you know, I like to say this. Ever since we got to this phase, this very determining phase of our liberation movement, La République du Cameroon has shown us all colors. They thought that somewhere along the line, we will get tired, we will abandon, we will cry, we will feel that we can do it, they will subdue us by all means and we will surrender, become very beggarly and see our situation even be worse, or even get worse than what it was before. They have continued to use their parachutes within our liberation movements, their planted agents, to try to push that kind of agenda that we should surrender now because we have been overwhelmed, because we don't have 
uh, any clear cut international support. We don't have any country supporting us because we cannot win. La Republic du Cameroon cannot win, and time is on the side of La Republic du Cameroon. I have this message for you all. Why they tell you that we are losing a lot of our people on a daily basis? I like to embarrass you by letting you know that the Malays among the populations of La Republic du Cameroon regarding this situation in the southern Cameroons in Amazonia is great and is getting greater by the day. The pain we are inflicting on La Republic du Cameroon is rather growing exponentially. I'll tell you this, I have people who are planted at the various points where La Republic du Cameroon carries their dead to go and hide so that nobody knows what is going on. Find out from within the ranks of the soldiers of La Republic du Cameroon, and they will tell you that even the count, whether it's in Zwimant or whoever that does, of the number of soldiers La Republic du Cameroon has lost in this liberation movement is child's play. Because too many of them die daily and they hide. Two days ago, I had someone in the mortuary, Justin Bamenda, who told me a truckload of remains of soldiers came in and they were wondering, we don't know where exactly did something happen, where were the, where, where the boys acting. This thing happened on a daily basis. I will start bringing some of the harrowing tales of some of the soldiers themselves or people who have experienced firsthand exactly what is going on. You must take note that a lot of the self-defense volunteers don't want to carry Android phones anymore. And so not all the things that happen on the ground are filmed or do we have the opportunity to have videos of. So I want to draw our attention to the fact that despite all the noise, La Republic du Cameroon does not have time on its side. That is not true. La Republic du Cameroon is rather undergoing a lot of pains. La Republic du Cameroon is rather frustrated and compounded because their long night is right around and they know they are going to face serious disorder. That is why they are recruiting ever more people in our ranks to try and bring seemingly convincing but extremely misleading arguments to make us to understand that we have lost, we should behave like Ojuku, we should behave like whoever and all or not, and simply surrender to La Republic du Cameroon. That has not happened yet. That is not going to happen. I know they were waiting very seriously for what was going on, for what was going to happen in Batibo on Tuesday, so they exploit that to go around making noise and all of that. But thank God, due to the maturity of all the actors involved in this liberation movement and the love of our people for their freedom, we have been able to overcome that challenge, and we will be able to overcome it all the way after we engage the discussions that we have, uh, you know, planned right ahead. My people of Amazonia. We have to remain steadfast. We have to continue to fund this liberation movement, to assist our internally displaced persons, to assist our refugees, to assist our prisoners of war. We have to continue to talk to each other despite the difficult challenges we face in terms of misunderstandings. We must recognize that we have before us an enemy who is specialized and thrives only in divide and rule, we must be able to overcome this challenge. On this uh, platform today, I'm going to have a conversation here about a video that has made the rounds by Albert Zonga. I want us to get into it very quickly. There are a lot of lessons to draw from it that some may not carefully pay attention to. What Albert Zonga is not saying is the most important thing that needs to be understood from that particular outing. Because there is so much that he brandishes but doesn't see. And that is what I have listened to very carefully. That is what I intend to share with all and sundry on this platform this Sunday. Before we get to that, I'd like us to share this thought. Stop wasting time on people who treat you good one day, then act like you don't exist the next day. I want to take it over. Stop wasting your time on people who treat you good one day, 
They act like you don't exist the next day. This is who La Republic du Cameroon are. This is who the people of La Republic du Cameroon are when it comes to their relation with the people of the Southern Cameroons. They call you, they hail you, they even deify you when they need you to use you to thwart the actions of your brethren meant to liberate themselves plus you. And once they are done getting whatever they want from you, they dump you. This is exactly what has happened to a lot of our self-defense volunteers who allowed themselves to be misguided into thinking that that nonsense that they were calling the DDR really meant something. That has been the fate of some people in this liberation movement who fell to the antics of La Republic du Cameroon and thought that the few fans that they gave them to buy their consciences of this liberation movement will continue to flow. Before long, they are understanding who La Republic du Cameroon are. There are many more who have gone too far that they can't even step back. Some have called me and they have told me, Mr. Akuro, True, I can't come out to talk again because I don't think anybody will believe me at all. But I want to assure you, these people are not our friends. These people, they only like us when we serve their purpose. That is when they call us. That's when they flatter us. That is when they use us. When you allow yourself to be cornered by the Republic of Cameroon, know simply that you are being used. And when they are finished getting whatever they want from you, you will be dumped. And you will be treated the same way they are treating each and every one of us. And I said here before, for the simple fact, for the mere fact that you originate from the former UN Trust Territory of British Southern Cameroons, aka Ambazonia, trust me, you are guilty before La Republic du Cameroon. It only depends when they decide to charge you before either their court of public opinion or their court of total despondency. That is what this whole thing is. So we should know this, we should bury this at the back of our minds as we listen to this analysis on what Albert Zonga said. Let's begin to listen to him. Revenons en 92, comme vous dites. Vous étiez au parti au pouvoir. J'étais au parti au pouvoir et j'ai été acteur. J'étais chargé de la communication pendant la campagne de 92. J'étais responsable de la communication. Et Charles, Don, Charles Dongo, qui est aujourd'hui directeur général, sait comment on a envoyé l'hélicoptère M. Chichi pour venir répondre à Frundi, Damjoya et Kim Issa. Une question. Il sait que j'étais un Attends, attends, ne me coupe pas. Parce que quand vous faites ça, je dis. Bon, Alors, en 92. Les partis politiques se sont réunis. Pendant ce temps, Fundi faisait son, son comité avec ses gens. Ils ont été surpris que les gens entrent pour leur dire « Nous venons de nous réunir et on pense que celui qui va conduire pour qu'on essaie de battre bien, c'est vous. » Donc Fundi n'est jamais allé chercher les gens. Je crois que tout ce bâti... Tout se bâtit autour d'un support. Hein? Tout bâtiment, pour, pour construire, il faut déjà que tu achètes le terrain, que tu fasses une fondation. Mais vous ne pouvez pas rester. On ne vous voit pas. Vous dites que je suis l'avenir autour de moi. Non, ce n'est pas possible. Et même quelqu'un, vous t'avez dit, toi tu viens de dire que le taxi ne rentre pas, que l'avion la, ne rentre pas. Non. Um, oh, let's see. Something here that I need to fix. One quick second while I fix this. Yes, I think that has been fixed. Um, you see, nature, uh, no, not nature, uh, Zonga, Aben Zonga here, begins by establishing very clearly that in 1992, during that particular election that the whole world has known right up to this day. But we have never had such a graphic presentation of exactly how La Republic du Cameroon and France 
stole Mr. Fundy's victory. But what had known that Paul Bia never won the election in 1992. Abe Zonga is here saying in 1992, he was in charge of communication and in charge of strategic communication at the CPDM Central Committee. And he is the one who was the go-between. But there is something he says here at this very beginning, which is very important, that the coalition that pushed Mr. Fundy in 1992 was not of Mr. Fundy's own making. That members of the various political parties, of other political parties, sat together, of some, because they were not all, there were a few that decided to go on their own, sat together and decided that they were going to align with the SDF, to push the SDF because they thought the SDF had the most viable path at beating Mr. Paul Bia at the polls. And he said, why are these, political, these leaders of those political parties, those opposition political parties, sat to have that meeting? Mr. Fundi was not aware. Nijon Fundi was having his own meeting with the, uh, with the National Executive Committee of the SDF. When they just came in and told him that we have decided to throw our weight behind you. Now, there's some important thing to note here. Because you hear after this, Zongang expresses frustration that you can't build a house without a proper foundation. He says you can't just sit, we don't, people don't see you. Then suddenly you just say, people just, just, just say everybody should come and align with you or line up behind you. Zongang is expressing frustration because they could not understand why every other person, including especially leaders of opposition political parties of La Republic to Cameroon extraction, of French speaking Cameroon extraction, decided to back Mr. Frundi. And so he believes that it was the wrong thing for them to do. That's why he said it was shocking that he did not go out there to ask his people to come to him. The people went by themselves and said, we have decided to back your candidature. I'd like us to note the, the uh, I mean, what this, what this tells us. You know, citizens of La Republic du Cameroon, since after the independence wars that they fought under the UPC and others and lost to the French, that ended up installing their own candidate as prime minister and later president of La Republic du Cameroon in 1960. The citizens of La Republic du Cameroon have never ever been people who have courage enough to stand up for what they believe in. And so, when they saw Mr. Fundi spearhead, when they saw Mr. Fundi come out fearlessly, when they saw Mr. Fundi, you know, garner crowds and mobilize the people and express charisma to a point they couldn't stand it, they told themselves, we can use this man to get what we want and then we start seeing later on what we can do that is the reason they backed him because a lot of things are coming ahead that i will explain which are things that as a journalist are garnered later talking to a lot of the actors who were involved at the time let's listen again to zonga pendant le tarsi bon je crois qu'entre temps l'avion est devenu moto Mais il faut qu'il accepte de rentrer dans le camion. Alors, vous étiez en 92, euh, avant la pub, hein, on sera cool sur la question. En 92, vous êtes au RDPC. Oui. Dites-nous la vérité aujourd'hui. Qui avait gagné l'élection de 92 Frundi. Et, et qui a triché, nous Parmi lesquels vous Oui. Vous-même vous êtes... vous je, je crois que j'étais même l'instigateur. Vous savez la question qui s'est posée Laquelle on a constaté que Bia avait perdu. Et il s'est posé un véritable dilemme. Nous étions... Je peux citer les morts, mais j'ai peur que les vivants craignent. Nous... Now, take note of this. Abel Zongam is asked the question pointedly. Now, Tell us, tell us the truth. In 1992, who won the election? You notice that Abel Zonga doesn't even 
wait for the question to be completed. He doesn't even hesitate. He immediately answers very spontaneously, Fundi. And from this moment, he goes on to say something. He says, Fundi won. But there was a problem. He said, we noticed that they noticed that Fundi won. Fundi won the 1992 presidential election. And they were all embarrassed. They said, but Paul Bia has lost. And now we are faced with a situation where Mr. Fundi has won. What are we going to do? Now, folks, this is where the truth about who we are as Southern Cameroonians, who we are as Ambazonians, how they perceive us in La Republic du Cameroon, how they perceive our belonging to La Republic du Cameroon when they actually thought they had conquered us and we were with them, how they perceived the future of Southern Cameroonians in La Republic du Cameroon. This is when that truth begins to come. Because how on earth will you say Fundi won? And we were all embarrassed. And Osara said, now Paul Bia has lost. What are we going to do? What? Why should such a question come up? If they considered Fundi a bona fide Cameroonian, deserving, like Paul Bia, like all of them, of the right to present himself for election and be elected to the highest office of the country, why should there have been an embarrassment? Why should there have been a problem? Why should they have seen it as a crisis? Because the point here is, they sit down and they tell themselves, now a foreigner has won elections in our country. What are we going to do? I'm saying this so that as we are going forward, you continue to listen to this specific message I'm pointing out that Zonga is saying without necessarily pronouncing it because that is what it is. We should always learn to call a spade by its name. Listen again. Nous étions au centre Fauchivé, à Kamifu, à Madouali, Zemeka, Papa Achou, Achidi Achou, Achidi Achou, J'avais dans mon équipe euh, Zéro Mort et Henri Bandelot pour la communication. On a constaté que Bia avait perdu. Et je vous assure... Dans tout le Cameroun ou seulement dans, à l'ouest ou ailleurs il avait, non, au nord-ouest Il avait perdu partout. Il avait perdu partout. Sur le plan général Sur le plan général. Dans, dans tout cas, Frondi avait gagné. Alors, il s'est posé un véritable problème. Et c'était là où la conscience de chacun était appelée. Est-ce qu'on va laisser Frundi gouverner ce pays Première question à tout le monde. Now, you know one thing here. Zongan says, he admits, Frundi did not only win in the southern Cameroon, that is in what they call Norway, Southwest, or he acknowledges, he recognizes that Fundi won all over the territory. Because even the results that were presented, 38 or something for Bia and 36 or something for Fundi, and they said it was a reversal, the result was even far crushing than that, as other archives could eventually demonstrate. But now he says, they met, and he has called the names of the people with whom they met. Of course, they always pick one of you put among themselves, that they will use eventually, and dump. And he mentioned uh, Pa Achidi Achu. And he says they sat together. He said it was a matter of what? Conscience. Did you hear that? It was a matter of conscience. Not conscience in the right direction. Not conscience in the interest of the country. He said, will we really allow Fundi to run this country? No, Abel Zongan's question is, will we really allow a Southern Cameroonian, an Anglophone, as they were calling, to rule this country? He said it was a matter of conscience. They now had to tell themselves, no, we can't let this happen. They can't be governed by people whom they consider slaves, 
They can't be governed by people whom they consider subhumans. They can't allow someone from an area whom they consider a conquered people to come and rule them. Impossible. That's why he says it was a matter of conscience. Not a matter of conscience with respect to the fact that, no, the election is clear. We lost. Bobia lost and Fruity won. So as we know, a matter of conscience to the fact that, yes, they have won. But now we know that we can't let them because they don't belong. He does not belong. And you will soon see, therefore, that even enemies of yesterday, we unite for the circumstance because as they say when push comes to shove you have what you call friendships brotherhood alliances of circumstance to make sure you deal with a specific or with a common enemy at some point in time before you go and continue fighting among yourselves later this is something that can easily go unnoticed. You may think that, no, he's just talking about another politician who was, no, 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 no. He's not just talking about another politician. Here, it was not a matter of the person of Fundi, but it was a matter of where Fundi came from. It was a matter of who Fundi is. And I think this should be a pointer to all those southern Cameroonians who sit and still make noise about something called federalism, who sit and are expressing some forlorn thoughts, some forlorn wishes of all the third republic should be uh, an anglophone or should be somebody from the southern Cameroons for the sake of unity. The Republic of Cameroon has never ever told anybody that they are interested in national unity. La Republic du Cameroon has always been interested in annexation, not national unity. Because if they were interested in national unity, the law that went to parliament, to the parliament of La Republic du Cameroon in 1995, seeking to reverse the name of the country from the Republic of Cameroon, that was that was uh, unilaterally decided by Paul Bia by decree in 1985 or was it 84? And that it should be reversed back to United Republic of Cameroon. Just so that Southern Cameroonian children, when they grow up and read their history, they should know, no, okay, two entities came together. But La Republic du Cameroon hell bent on the annexationist agenda. Ignore the pleas of the late Honorable Ihims Jacob Anye and defeated that law with the crushing La Republic of Cameroon majority in that parliament. So when you hear Albert Zonga talk, I'd like you to pay more attention to exactly what he intends to say, but that he denies himself. The opportunity to say it that loud he says it silently i just need to listen so keenly to hear it because that is exactly the crux of the matter let's go back to zonga no on ne peut pas laisser frundi qu'est ce qu'on fait on change au profit de bouba bello d'adamou d'amjoya ou de kindi parce que les quatre, les trois sont potables. On accepte. Mais lui, non. Moi, en tant que fils du pésiste, j'étais le numéro un. Non. Pourquoi J'ai vécu dans ma tendre enfance. Now, I stop us there again. You hear what he says. You now, an election is organized. Candidates are declared. People go to the poll. They validate their candidatures. They validated the candidature of Mr. John Fruity. They go to the polls. And they validate the candidature of each person 
because you meet the constitutional criteria set for you to qualify to become president of the republic. Because any person whose candidature is validated, what the validation committee is telling the voters is that all these people you see who are candidates, any one of them that you elect qualifies to be president of the republic. So, Zongan tells us here that after the election, they sat down. He called Ahmad Wali, he called the names of this, he called the name of Kanchu Komen, he called the name of all of that, and he said, they asked themselves, will we let Mr. Fundi, what he's saying here, will we allow a Southern Cameroonian, someone who is from the territory we have annexed. Someone who is subhuman. Someone who is supposed to be a slave to run this country. And he says emphatically, without mincing words, that he, Zonga, was the first no. He doesn't pretend. He admits. Listen, folks. What this liberation movement has done is that it is forcing the people of La Republique du Cameroon to confess to exactly what they have done to us. The level of esteem they had for us. The plans they have in the offing for us. We heard Mr. Paul Biard himself say in Paris, in France, that the plan was to assimilate Southern Cameroonians. The plan was to swallow us, was to absorb us. But things have not gone as planned. Things have not gone as expected. This is it here again. This is Zonga coming now on his own account to make his own public confession as to the level, as to the place that is reserved for us in their, in their country, in their hearts and minds. Because he says he was the first. No. And hear what he says. He says, he turned around and said, Buba Belo Maigari, do you want to take it over? He said, no, I don't want. Uh, Damjoya, should we give it to Damjoya? Mm, no. We should not give it to him. Should we give it to Jean-Jacques Kindi? No. He said, about to. He said, these people that have called, they are potent. But Fundi? No. Did you hear that? These people are all citizens of La Republique du Cameroon. Of course, they are full-blown citizens. Of course, they are human beings. Of course, they are people we esteem. Of course, they belong to this country. But Fundi, no. How? That was the slave. He's supposed to be under us. How on earth can we find, can we eventually ask him above us? No, that can't work. Just, just imagine, you start calling all those who did not even come close. Should we give it to Ndam Joya? Ndam Joya had about 3 or 4 percent. Should we give it to Belo Buba? Belo Buba was far behind. Should we give it to Jean Jacques Ekindi? Jean Jacques Ekindi's score was, I mean, extremely low. But these are people. Should we even give it to Antaga Sagai? No, Antaga Sagai was a noise maker. He even said he had decided to join Bia. Should we even give it to Ahmad Wali, who was not a candidate? No. Yeah, all of these people, there are people who can consider. But Fundi, never. And you, you can see it for yourself. What he is saying, without saying it, these people are all citizens of La Republic du Cameroon. Fundi is not. So, he, Abe Zonga, from the West region, a Bamiliki citizen, was the first no. It is the same Albert Zonga who, when he found himself in Konemi, came out and made some fallacious declarations that they had discussed with Sisiku Ayuk Julius Tabe and the other members of his cabinet that in Konemi, and they had come to an agreement that if that they could support Kanto to become president of the Republic of Cameroon and return the country to federalism. The same Albert Zonga. 
I like the people of Amazon to continue to take note of these fingers that are being poked into our eyes daily. Because for Zongan to have the gods to sit on motion television and say this kind of things should be indicative of what will be the fate of the people of Amazonia if we ever found ourselves surrendering like some charlatans want us to do. Sorry about the word charlatan. I usually don't like to be insulted, but sometimes some specific names better describe a class of people. So permit me to use some of those expressions once in a while. No malice is intended. Let's listen to Zonga again. Yes. Comment on a massacré les jeunes soldats dans l'UPC. Les chefs avaient des astuces. Ils prenaient les cartouches de chevrotine, ils ouvraient et ils enlevaient les, les plombs. Il ne restait dedans que la poudre. Et ils chargeaient dans le fusil. Et ils faisaient des simagrées et ils disaient à Ougar, tirez sur moi. Et on tirait, boum Il dit, vous voyez, rien ne se passe. Et il donnait ce truc aux gens que fumez. Dès que vous voyez les militaires, n'ayez pas peur. Le gars allait et on les faisait tomber comme des mouches. Quand quelqu'un arrive, quand quelqu'un arrive dans un pays en détresse et vous dit, comme seul programme, qu'il est magicien, d'un shoot à Kachan, d'un shoot à Kachan, il dit que il est invulnérable. Et sa popularité a commencé à l'Ouest parce que l'Ouest a dit. Biala est tellement fort qu'il n'y a qu'un sorcier pour le renverser. Voilà, tout le monde dit le sorcier, c'est Frondi. Or, j'avais déjà dans mon intervention pour les décrire, dire que le Cameroun n'est pas un laboratoire où chaque apprenti sorcier va venir tenter ses expériences. Donc, il était question. Now, this is the most shameful of all the parts in the, the corrections. I mean, the most disgusting, the most disgraceful. The most embarrassing to see someone like Abel Zonga who wants people to trust him, who wants people to listen to him, who wants people to think that he has something in his head, that he is educated, that he thinks and reasons. To imagine that it's Abel Zonga saying these kind of profanities about a man like Fundi. I should tell you, don't think. That someday they will see you and consider you. This same Albert Zonga, I have seen him move to Mr. Fundi to say they wanted to work together at the time when he had fallen from grace from Mr. Bobby and CBD. I have seen this same Albert Zonga claim he wanted to be close to the SDF. This same Albert Zonga said he wanted to be part of the opposition coalitions and things like that when he created his own parties. The same Albert Zonga, I've heard him have interviews in which he said Mr. Fundi was a great man, a great politician. This is the same Albert Zonga. Unfortunately, I got chased out of that country the way I got chased out. I would have played rushes of Albert Zonga and I know there are people out there who have those rushes. And I invite you, please, either share with me or publish them on social media. Let everyone listen to our best hunger, what he was saying about food. The incident that our best hunger is saying is narrated here regarding Mr. Fundi. I lived it when I was in Form 4 in secondary school in Bafusa. That was in 1991. I guess I was in Form 5. Yeah, I should have been in Form 5. That was in 1991. That I lived. Well, that was 1990. What am I saying? That was 1990, yes. That was 1990. I was in, in, in Form 4. At the COS Belen Government by Lima Secondary School Bafusa. I lived that incident 
It happened around Mary River in Bafusa. When you are going down towards the military barracks, for anybody who knows Bafusa, when you pass Marche Bay and you go down and you are going towards the airport in Bafusa, you came to a place that they call Mary River. That just before one hotel that they call Sare Le Cancor. There's another hotel down called Airport Hotel, just for you get to the military barracks. Around that area, Mary River. Mr. Fundy was coming for a rally in Bafusa. He had a, the population got him out of his car all the way right down from just after the military barrack around Hotel Sare Le Cancon. And there was a mammoth crowd marching behind him and they were marching with him to go right from that place to the stadium in Bafusa where he would have his rally. And when Fundy got to around Mary Vira, soldiers had come out to interrupt the event. And so they opened fire. They shot at Mr. Fundy. And eventually, Mr. Fundy even showed the place where the bullet touched him around his leg, below his tibia. So one of the bullets touched him and he had a small wound around them. There were about six shots, some in the air and some directly on the ground. I was there at that rally as a secondary school student. And it is the people who went out saying they shot and Mr. Freddy was doing this and the bullets were flying left, doing that and the bullets were flying right doing this, and the bullets were flying in the air. If the people were around who were describing that, Mr. Fundy himself never had the chance to bother to say he was a magician who was so tough that no bullet could get into him. To hear Ben Zonga say this kind of trash, and that was the only incident. When Mr. Zonga says Fungi had his only program, oh, I'm a magician, if they shoot, I will do this, I will do that, it is disgraceful and embarrassing. And he says that Mr. Fungi and the SDF had no program. Let me embarrass Mr. Zonga. Mr. Ben Zonga, do you know, did you ever hear about something? In 1992, known as Nestroc? What they call Nestroc. The National Economic Salvation Program, NESTROC. And for anyone watching me, go to Google, type NESTROC. If you can't find it on Google and you know Dr. Mfo Susungi, reach out to Dr. Mfo Susungi to share with you the entirety of the program NESTROC. The CPDM even eventually went out to copy aspects of what the SDF presented as its manifesto. When you see toll gates, toll gates were part of Nestroc. But the plan in Nestroc was that toll gates were going to be installed on newly constructed superhighways. And it was going to be such that the partners that they were going to work with in constructing those roads will recover their money from toll gates and eventually the state will own the roads. To hear Zongang today say there was no program is a shock. Like I've said, go on to Google, type Nesproc, N-E-S-P-R-O-G, N-E-S-P-R as in Robert, O as in orange and G as in grammar. Next problem. An elaborate program. An elaborate economic salvation program. And it carried the footprints of Dr. Mfo Susungi. So when you listen to someone like Aben Zonga, who knows these things very well, try to deride, try to downplay, try to humiliate the personality of Mr. Fruity, 
considered even by citizens of the Republic of Cameroon as one of the most venerated politicians of the 90s and early 2000s, then you can understand what they think about all of us, about you and about me. Zongan chooses this time to talk because he knows that Mr. Frudi is no more. And Mr. Frudi will not be able to come up and speak for himself. Listen. Zonga is only a mouthpiece of a cross-section of the governing class of La Republic to Cameroon. And also, this is the education they have been giving to their people. Folks, this should teach each and every one of us that as far as this liberation movement is concerned, we have one way, one way, and it is the only way, victory. It will be hard. No liberation movement has been won as if it was a walk through the park. It hasn't happened. Go down to liberation history. The people of Southern Sudan, they sang the same songs that they are singing to us here. They had one million songs as Nkomos. They had one million Capo Daniels telling them you can't get anywhere. They got there anyway. The people of East Timor, they told them the very same thing. They had even two million of the songs on Komos and others. The Fon Charles, the Ngu Santoses, they had too many of them. They got there. They made it. The same thing was told the people of Eritrea. They got there. Listen, my people of Amazon. As the days are going by, the people of La Republic of Cameroon continue to tell us exactly who they are and what level, what esteem, what level of esteem they have, they have no esteem at all for us. What level, at what point they hold us. I said here before that when people tell you who they are, believe them the very first time, the very first day. Let's listen to Zonga again. Question de faire que ce soit quelqu'un d'autre qui gagne. Mais on a, on a expérimenté quelque chose. On est allé voir les trois que je viens de citer. Et on a dit à chacun que Frundi vient de gagner. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait Ils ont dit non. On ne peut pas jeter le pays dans l'eau. Ça serait grave. Did you hear? On ne peut pas jeter le pays dans l'eau. So they told Namjoya, they told Belo Bouba, they told Jean-Jacques Kindi, that Frundi has won. They say, no, no, no. We cannot throw the country in water. Did you hear that? We cannot throw the country in water. Yet, Mr. Frundi's candidate paper went through the entire scrutiny. He was validated as a candidate because he qualified to be a candidate. But get the contradiction in Albert Zonga. The other members of the opposition have gone to Frundi to say, we will back you. Lead us. He didn't go to them. But suddenly he's saying the same people came back and said, hey, no, we can't throw the country in water. Because letting a southern Cameroonian win the election to run the country will be throwing the country in water. If you don't feel insulted, if you don't feel thoroughly provoked, if you don't feel thoroughly humiliated, I do. How much more? What way else do you want the people of La Republic of Cameroon to tell you that you don't belong? You will never belong for you to understand that this liberation movement is the only way out for you and for me. I just said here a while ago, Paul Bia with his own lips said it. This same Albert Zonga has said before that John Wute sitting there, say he's prime minister, that there's no prime minister, that that one, Bia just put him there, 
That if I call ministers and I want somebody to come first, you should stand up. That's what is called premier ministry. The share of that, he has no powers. He never pretended this same Albert Zonga. He said so. That's to you, John Gute, who is seated there at the Prime Minister's office and they ask you to say, oh no, Cameroon is one and indivisible. Hear him. This is a message to all of you who are calling yourself elite or CBD and whatever in the Republic of Cameroon. This is a message to you that as far as you are a southern Cameroonian, you are born with the power of limitation over your head. There is a limit to where you can go. You will never ever cross that limit. No human being, no human being should be subjected to that whatsoever. When you stay in a bad place with bad people too long, you end up looking, feeling, and acting like them. And that is what is happening to quite some of our people who today are unable to see truth in the way it is told them in broad daylight, who are unable to recognize an insult even when it is thrown right in their faces, who are unable to see a rebuff, rejection, even when they throw it in their faces in a way nobody can doubt it. My people of Ambazon, If those who were still moving around like Dr. Munzo, like my brother, Comrade Agbobala, was still moving around and talking federalism, 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 if they decide to let their brains work and take time and listen to this video, and I'm sure Dr. Munzo has watched it, I'm sure Barista Agbobala has watched it. The should already have come out there and apologized to the people of the southern Cameroons that they did not know that they were trying to mislead us a second time. It is a shame that you can listen to such and you say sit down and tell yourself that something good can come out of La Republic of Cameroon for the people of Ambazon. Hell no. I say, hell no. Take it from me. Let's listen to him again. Oh, there was one last time. Et je vous dirai que ce que vous avez découvert au soir de sa vie a commencé dès ce moment-là. La charte de conscience. Dont les autres, les autres, tous, ils sont vivants. Non, il y a Adamou qui est mort. On dit que non. Vraiment, donnez à bien. Donner à bien. Donc, si, on, si ce soir. Est-ce est qu'aujourd'hui, vous n'avez pas peur de faire des -ce révélations que... comme celle-là Non, je n'ai pas, pas peur parce que ça, ça veut dire que. Parce que là, vous faut... avez trahi en 92. Non, je ne trahis pas. L'histoire s'écrit. Il faudra un jour qu'on écrive. Il faut... Parce que les, les gars racontent des histoires. On n'a jamais. So, folks, tomorrow, they will come and tell you. That, oh no, leave this thing, let's go for elections, go for elections, choose your people, and Mr. see Joshua, choose your people, uh, you will vote, vote your people. To... But they, you are told here that Adamu Damjoya, Belobuba Maigan, Jean Jacques Ekingi, and all of those other so called opposition leaders, including Amani Bielo, that they all sat down and said, no, rather than have Fundi be president, rather than have a southern Cameroonian, rather than have an anglophone as we are calling us, be president, and then we have change in this country. No, 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 no. Better go back into fire with Mr. Paul Bia. Oh, yes! That they also said, no, give it back to Bia. Give it to Paul Bia. And Damjoya kept disturbing people's ears around. We build by all op op opposition, all union for change. Listen. In 2004, because I like to say these things that I lived, that I witnessed, that I experienced, so that you know, not just the ones that I'm inferring. As a journalist in that country, during a lot of the period after 1999, working at the government broadcaster, 
as a national broadcaster, having access to all these people, I did have conversations and I did have access to some of those things that I'm sharing with you here. That's why the Republic of Cameroon has been after my life for a long time, from 2017 to this date, without relent. In 2004, in the 2004 presidential election, the opposition parties came together and said they needed to get a coalition and put one candidate, one candidate, one for the entire opposition to better challenge Mr. Paul Bia. But of course, at the time, the SDF remained the most populous party and Frundi, the I mean, the clear challenger to Mr. Paul Bia. To rehearse what Zonga is saying, these people sat together. Of course, the SDF participated in the meetings that were represented by the late Tazuaka, by the late Professor Tazuaka as Zonga. At the end of several meetings, they came out, bombshell, and announced that the unique candidate of the opposition was going to be Adamunda Joya of the UDC party, whose political party has never won anything out of the noon division of the West region. Professor Tazwaka Songanyi was the Secretary General of the SDF party. He represented the SDF at that meeting. I say it was a bombshell because the controversy was so much and a lot of things were said. Of course, the chairman of the SDF and his party refused to be part of that coalition because it sounded unreasonable that the leader, the most charismatic of all the leaders of the opposition and the most popular will draw behind to support someone who support base, who support base, whose fear dump was a small division like the known. And so a lot of things were said. I recall people who said Professor Tazwaka Songani has sold out because they negotiated and they were told that Dr. Andamun Damjoya's wife, that is his initial wife, or his first wife, was French and she was related to the family of one of the French presidents, whatever they say, was, um, uh, was, it, was it Chirac? No, I think not Chirac, but he was a socialist president or someone like that. That was related to his family. And so, if you were the Moon Damjoya, France would back it. And so it was claimed that they convinced Professor Tadzwaka Songani that in order for them to defeat Paul Bia, they needed to have a citizen of La Republic du Cameroon. And not Fundi, because Fundi would be disqualified because he was from Southern Cameroons. And they needed, therefore, a citizen of La Republic du Cameroon who have the backing of France. The reason they were picking Adamunda and Joya. And at the level of the SDF, the accusation was that when they made those arrangements to win over the approval of Professor Tazwaka Asongani, they promised him that when Damjoya becomes president, he was going to become prime minister flouting and pushing Fundi behind. Of course, that was a conspiracy theory. Because I had the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with the late Professor Tadzwaka Asongani, who took, uh, I mean, who was a columnist once in a while in a newspaper outlet that I ran, known as the Times Journal. And Professor Tadzwaka Asongani, in all honesty, confessed that in that meeting, they received confidential information that the French government was ready to back Adamundam Joya and this poor beer, but they would be reluctant to back Mr. Fundi because Mr. Fundi in the 90s had led a campaign to boycott French goods and said to hell with France. So the French could not trust him and would not deal with him. And so he felt that if this is the notion and the interest of the country is at stake, checking out beer to bring change, perhaps that was the better thing to do. And then he was going to have the opportunity to explain to the rest of the party, but nobody ever paid him attention. Rather, they ran away with that contention that he had taken a bribe and that he had uh, accepted because 
he had an arrangement to become prime minister under Adamunda Mjoya. But Professor Tazoka Songhai said one thing. Mr. Akuro had to be realistic because on all indications, it was clear that even these folks will never accept for anyone of Southern Cameroon's extraction to be president in this country. A lot of the rights of from Professor Tazoka Asongani became tilted towards supporting the SCNC ideology. If you were a reader of the Times Journal, right up to 2017, and you have copies, you will find these articles inside, and you will agree with what I'm explaining here. You will understand where I'm coming from. So this is to say, it is not today. This has been in the woods all of, I mean, throughout, and it will be this way forever. So imagine you hear in that talk and stand, oh no, this, but they won. The opposition won. And they said, the leader of the opposition that won is not one of us. He is not one of us. Frondi is not one of us. Anglophones are not our citizens. Southern Cameroonians, Anglophones, not outside of us. Southern Cameroonians are not our citizens. They cannot rule here. Why do you want to submit yourself to subhumanism, to be a secondary citizen when international law recognizes you as an entity, gives you the right to self-determination? Whereas we got into this ill-fated union as one of two parties equal in status, and I hear so if they give us, give, give, what an insult. And I want to take it further. You all watched the late venerated barrister Ben Muna, barrister Bernard Acho Muna, say in the in 2017, when he said to the youth of Amazon, let them fight, let them bloody fight. The future is theirs. And he said, my future is behind me. I've done my life. I can't even die tomorrow. He even said that the miserable one too. Academic years. I'll fight for their future. Because he himself had lived it. When Mr. When Barrister Kerimun was presidential candidate for a party known as the Alliance of Progressive Forces, APF, in 2011, I was his communication consultant. Barista Keremuna had very good discussions with the French because he had learned from the experience, from working with the late Professor Tazoka Songani, from being, uh, I mean, working in the UN system. Working, he had understood that unless you have French backing, you cannot be president in La République du Cameroon. You cannot be president. And so, if he wanted to be president, he needed to work with the French. He made several trips to Paris. Several trips. And they promised him, they said, no, we have heard you. We have understood you. You speak excellent French. We even trust you. We know the family that you come from. We are convinced that you have good support. And so, we will finance you to defeat Mr. Paul Bia so that at least you will bridge the gap between Southern Cameroonians and citizens of La Republic of Cameroon. This information I'm sharing here in the interest of those who continue to make noise that we need uh, a Southern Cameroonian for the Czech Republic. It's a pipe dream that will never happen. I want you to know that people, well-meaning people with serious contacts have made moves, but they never ever got there. I know there are some of you out there who say, oh, I don't like to listen to Baku, oh, that's a change of my I don't want to do this. Listen. Or oh, you have shared my videos with somebody that said, no, don't share that man's nonsense with me here. Please. please share this particular video with them and tell them, let it be the last they watch. Although some have said, no, I don't want to watch, because if I open and watch, she will get money on YouTube. When you look at the ratings, at the audience ratings, and you ask yourself, what comes on, 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 on YouTube? That's not commensurate with the time 
just the time that I spend to do research and prepare this loss. This law will be slightly long because I want this information to be out as one document. If you don't have the time to listen to it or not, watch it or not, take your time. There is an audio version for those who have difficulties getting the megabytes. That audio version will also go out because I've done that most recently. I sent both. The audio version is light enough and people will be able to have access to it. So Barista Ben Muna, Barista Bernard Acho Muna, of blessed memory, made safer trip to France. When he came back on one trip, he told me he, there was an agreement and the French were going to give him 50 billion CFA francs. So the campaign budget for Mr. Akere Muna, for Barista, for, 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 for Barista Bernard Muna, not Akere Muna, beg your pardon, was 50 billion. I know these things because, like I said, I was his communications consultant. Then, there's a gentleman here only called uh, Ujamben Stephen. It's one of those who was uh, picked up in Guinea recently by the self-defense volunteers because he was violating the 20th May injunction. Ujamben Stephen, we work together. He knows what I'm talking about. So Barista Bernard Muna, when he came to time for him to go to France and to let them begin to disburse these resources, at least beginning by even 10 billion, so they should have a massive campaign run. What did they do? They took him to a baba that gave him an excellent shift, good shift. Oh, if you recall, the Standard Tribune of my dear friend Eugene Fomboa published an article with Barista Bernard Muna on the front. Looking young, he said, hey, discover the new Barista Bernard. Yeah, young, boyish, everything. That is all the French gave him at the end of the day. When they did that, they took a lot of pictures of him there in France. They prepared some few posters and all that. They told him, we are sending you to Senegal. Go to Senegal, you will meet uh, the president of Senegal. I think it was Abdullah Ward at the time. Whatever, you know, discuss with him. We are going to arrange to channel money to you through those African countries. Oh, eh, nothing. When that was brewing, they told Barista Bernard Muna, walk around back home to get a coalition behind you. That's what happened like Pascal Zambo, who is in prison, Zambo, who is in prison now, had moved from the, from the SDF, he joined the APF, they had carried all of these people, they said they were even running around to get some, uh, some few Betty Ekambulu people to come in because they needed to show that at least he was a melting pot. And then enters one Dr. Ilen Kamga with something called Offer Orange. If you recall, there was something called the Orange Offer. Barista Ben Muna spent all of his money sponsoring the orange offer because Dr. Elaine Kanga and others had assured him that they were going to do everything to use the offer orange also in collaboration with France to back his candidature and boost his candidature that the, oh, the orange offer, the offer orange, that was a massive movement who back him. Barista Ben Muna spent Millions financing Ile Kamga of Ofo Orange. And at the end of the day, finance a big mega event of Ofo Orange in Bamenda. And that agreement was in Bamenda, Ofo Orange was going to present him as a unique candidate of the opposition. It did not come to pass. They duped him even right there. Because Ile Kamga and others changed the rules of the game at the last minute because they knew. They cannot back a southern Cameroon. We had this conversation with the late barrister Bernard Muna. When they started going around the field, he was cash trapped. He didn't have enough money to even run his campaign again. And at the end of the day, it was really, really, really worrisome. He couldn't even pay the bills again to his campaign staff. And all of the year to start depending on his brother, Barrister Akere Muna, to pay some of these things. Because he was duped by citizens of like the Cameroon. And France. I say all these things, and the intention of the French was only they were playing for beer, 
and use the offer to play because they did not want, because they were moved to reconcile Barista Bernard Mona and Mr. Fundy so that they should go back and rebuild the big SDF family. The French continued to be so frightened about the prospect of Mr. Fundy rehashing what happened in 1992 and they needed to use that high technique to institute the divide and rule. So when you see these people moving around that they are federalists or whatever, this is the work of France and La Republique du Cameroon. The only way they keep you in total subjugation and defeat you, divide and rule. That's why you hear someone says that he sucks and come up out there, I'll come to his case later, screaming, oh, he wants to presidential candidate and I heard an audio which he said a lot of stupid fallacies that I will come to. I won't let you go with it. That I will come to. So it's all he wants to be presidential candidate. Of course, he knows he can't be. He doesn't run a political party. He knows he can't have the 500 signatures from the, from the, the, the regions of La Republic du Cameroon to be candidate. But he's being used to set confusion in our liberation movement. My dear people of Amazonia, I usually take time to bring this knowledge, bring this information that we share among ourselves so that we know exactly where we stand, we know exactly what they think about us so that we all come to the clear understanding. If we ever want our children and our children's children to be treated as humans, to be treated as full-blown citizens, to be treated with dignity, to enjoy equal opportunities, we have one thing only to do, support this liberation movement. There are no two things. Look at my face. Listen to me. Capture this. Keep it. The day you find an image like me, See here that no, let us go for federation and not independence. Know that that will be artificial intelligence. That will not be me. Take it from me today. I have lived it firsthand. I work very closely with all of those people. Even those who are calling themselves ministers there. I work very closely with about all of them. When they leave the offices of minister and, and go back to their homes, go and see them lamenting, crying. Some even talk and you feel pity for them. When you stand far, you admire them that they are ministers. But you see, you have pity for them because of the treatment they're having, even in government, simply because they're of Southern Cameroon's extractions. Of Southern Cameroon's extraction. This is first-hand information. It's not that someone tells me because I lived it. I just wouldn't call their names here because, I mean, they are also seated there. They are also seated back home. My dear people of Ambazonia, let's listen to the last excerpt of our, of our best song and we'll call it quit on this note today. Euh, C'était même un secret de polichinelle. Tout le monde sait qu'on euh, avait perdu. Tout le monde sait également que l'opposition a gagné euh, les législatives dans la même année 92 et qu'ils ont vendu. Donc ce n'est pas euh, tout ça là. Il faut, il faut comprendre pour, pour, quand, vous, quand, on vous par, quand vous parliez de l'opposition. Quand un enfant attrape une panthère, il croit que c'est un chat, il peut le laisser partir. Nous, moi j'étais au RDPC quand l'opposition a gagné l'Assemblée nationale. Mais à notre grande surprise, chacun d'eux venait la nuit pour négocier avec nous. Donc on s'est aperçu qu'ils ah, ah, ne sont même pas conscients qu'ils ont pris le pays. On a négocié. Ah, d'accord. Revenons en 92, comme vous dites. Vous étiez au parti au pouvoir J'étais au parti au pouvoir et j'étais acteur. J'étais chargé de la communication pendant la campagne de 92. So, folks, I want to let go of Belzonga. Because as you can see, like they say, when God instructs, even the devil will obey. This confession is 
coming out in spite of himself. Because it has gotten to a point where he knows he cannot no longer be conceived. They are desperate to now overcome the monster they built. The time of truth is coming. Don't think this is the last that you are hearing. There is much more that you will hear. I see there is much more that you will hear. I had occasion to talk with Mr. Fundi several times. Mr. Fundi and I were very, very close. Very, very. This is no loving matter. In fact, it's diseased, and I can say this. The last place I stopped at before finally running out of the country was at Mr. Fundi's residence in Tarikon. Mr. Fundi himself never means what he's saying here. These people are evil. But I don't know. 2017, Mr. Fundi believed clearly that it made sense for us to go our separate ways for the Republic to come over. He had quarrel with the direction we were taking. He thought the approach we took was the wrong one. And we needed to get back to the drawing board to have another conversation on how to attain the same objective. You heard Mr. Fundi say himself that if I were still a young man, I would also be in the bush there with my own stick, fighting for the same liberation movement. He knew. He knew. All the members of parliament, of the CPDF, of the SDF, I beg you, uh, I beg your pardon, of the time, including Vanegangse Muchego, who is the senator, even O.C. Joshua, they all know how close I was with Mr. Fundi. But I assure you, not only once, not only twice, not only thrice, not only four times did Mr. Fundi say we would be better off without these people. But the dynamics of politics and of the times always have a sway. La Republic du Cameroon is a master enchanter. They had Mr. Fundi live with the sword of Damocles dangling over his head all the time because of the death of one Mr. Ebule in Yaoundé when there was a fight between the late barrister Ben Mona and Mr. John Fundy of blessed memory over leadership of the SDF and a, 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 a Congress that Barrister Muna was bent on holding in Yaoundé and a fight ensued between those loyal to Barrister Bernard Muna and those loyal to Mr. Fundy. Someone died. The government of La Republic of Cameroon saw that its opportunity. They didn't waste time to sue Fundy for manslaughter. And they played around, played around, kept that matter to be like a sword over his head for him to feel that at any given point his freedom could be at stake as a result of that. Although they knew that tampering with Mr. Fundy would have set the country ablaze. But all the same, they knew how to play their cards. I don't want to get into details, but trust me, Mr. John Fundy was a great, great politician who understood a good lot of things. But unfortunately, he was operating in a setup where the system is specialized in divide and rule. Because all the time before he knew it, all the people who were around him were already bought over by the CBDM system. Some were given international jobs. Some were given this and that. Some were pushed in this direction. Some were provided resources. Some were. And that is how they did everything to reduce him to a point where they could then be able to manipulate him. That is exactly what La Republic Cameroon has been struggling to do with this liberation movement. That is exactly what La Republic Cameroon has been struggling to do with the leadership 
of our liberation movement. Notice it, they have been doing everything possible to attack and isolate anyone who is well-meaning. This is what it is. My dear people of Amazon, we have to stand firm and resolute. If you did not know, today you know. Now you know. You will never ever say again that you did not know. Abe Zonga has said it all. Abe Zonga, he has said it all. In a normal country, a man like Abe Zonga saying this kind of thing should be tendering national apologies. But hell no, tendering apologies because of what? Because of subhumans? Because of slaves? Because of a conquered people who ought to be swallowed, who ought to be assimilated? Give me a break. My dear people of Amazonia, I want to thank each and every one of you that found time to be part of this uh, broadcast today. And uh, <laughs> I'd like to, you know, uh, call it quits at this point. I know it's pretty long. We've been together for almost uh, one hour, 25 minutes. And so I'd like to end it here and um, I'll be right back here in the days ahead, perhaps tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, for us to discuss other very pertinent issues affecting our liberation movement. So folks, share this video, share as much as you can, let our folks, let our people, let the people of Amazonia, let the people of the Southern Cameroons know the truth. Knowing this truth will help us. Knowing this truth will take us to the shores where we want to go. This is the only way that we will be able to restore the very soul of our country. This is the only way we will restore the soul of our country. So, um, thank you. And, uh,